people don't do that? Yes! 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. 11 Alive News at 11.30 a.m. begins with breaking news. A soldier was killed early this morning in a helicopter incident at Fort Stewart in Georgia. A press release says the incident involved two helicopters at the Wright Army Airfield, but not many other details were given at this hour. The soldier was with the 3rd Combat Aviation Brigade. We'll update you on this story on 11 Alive as we get more details. We'll switch you now for a forecast this midday. We have a wind advisory right now out there across the entire western side of the state. Meteorologist Chesley McNeil is tracking the growing chance of some severe weather tonight, Chesley. All right, Chesley's getting ready for us to come up and talk about these clouds moving in. We're talking about all that <laughs> wind coming our yeah, way. Thanks. I know the forecast. I was with you for two hours this morning. I can stall for you now. A absolutely. Thanks for stalling for me. Really appreciate that. Sorry <laughs> about that, ladies and gentlemen. But here we are. All right, so we have the clouds in place right now. Mostly cloudy skies, and that's the way it's going to be for the rest of the afternoon. Now, those winds will start to pick up as well. As Aisha mentioned, we have a wind advisory that we have to talk about. I want to show you where those storms are right now. You can see it back off to the west now, just moving out of uh, eastern Texas. We'll momentarily be moving into uh, Louisiana and as it moves over toward Mississippi and into Alabama, that's where we're expecting to really start to erupt. We have a marginal risk for severe weather over parts of Mississippi, Louisiana and into Alabama. For us, we're looking at the clouds right now. That rain won't arrive here, at least those thunderstorms until around midnight or a little after. So it'll be in the wee hours in the morning that we'll be experiencing uh, some of those uh, gusty winds that will be associated with a few of these thunderstorms around. Now we're under a level two threat, as you can see from Rome down to Atlanta, eastward over toward uh, Athens down through Macon is where we had that level one threat. Either way, what we're going to experience is the very heavy rain, damaging winds with a few of those thunderstorms, certainly possible. And the tornado threat is low, but uh, couldn't be out of question for a brief tornado to begin to spin up. And again, we won't see that until after midnight tonight. So it'll be during the wee hours of the morning that we'll be having the biggest impacts on our area. Rain threat very high. And we got the wind at a moderate level and then low for tornadoes and hail. But it's something that we'll have to watch out for as we head through the overnight tonight. So go ahead and get yourself ready. The other thing that you'll experience today will be those winds. Again, those winds gusting up to about 45 miles per hour this afternoon. That's even ahead of that main line that will move through. We're going to track it for you hour by hour in the full forecast coming up. Aisha, back to you. Developing right now, Gwinnett County police are searching for the shooter who killed a man in a shopping center parking lot. 11 Alive's Brittany Klein Peter live for us along Indian Trail Road near Low Burn. Brittany, what are they saying happened out there? Police say that that body was found in this shopping center. You can see there's a lot of businesses in here. Many of them haven't opened up quite yet or might still be closed from the early morning shooting. But police tell me they are looking at surveillance video. They say the man who was in his 30s or 40s but hasn't been named yet was found dead just after midnight. They say when they got to the scene, they found ballistic evidence and they are still gathering witness interviews. It's believed some altercation ensued in the parking lot that led up to the shooting. I'm not sure if he was hit multiple times. It's believed there's multiple shell casings. At this point, police believe that the shooting stemmed from some kind of argument. They couldn't tell us whether it happened in one, one of the businesses or outside. But right now, they are still interviewing witnesses and trying to gather information. They're asking anyone with information to contact them. Aisha. All right, Brittany, thank you. Turning now to a developing story. One man telling us about the sheer panic that broke out inside of a gym in Stone Mountain when gunshots started going off outside. There were like crackers uh, going out, like something happened, like talk, talk, talk. And and then I suddenly uh, looked around and everybody's just piling and running and there was stampede going on, running people running from everywhere coming towards us. That was Ali Zane, who says he was working out inside the LA Fitness on Stone Mountain Highway last night when he heard those gunshots. He says two people got into a fight over a basketball and that escalated to gunfire. Zane showed us his car that was parked near the front of the gym. Check that out. You can see that bullet hole right in the side of his door. He says it was a real scary situation. The gym was full of people and that really could have caused a lot of people to have gotten hurt. Some sobering statistics about dangerous criminals continuously finding new victims. Take a look at this. In just one week, APD officers reported arresting 20 repeat offenders, which had a total of 553 previous arrests and 114 felony convictions. Now we're learning 
a thousand people are responsible for 40% of the crimes committed in Atlanta. So what can be done to break the cycle and keep you safe? Hope Ward is bringing you the solutions. Arrest, convict, repeat. How does Atlanta and Georgia stop this from happening? Is it longer prison sentences? Maybe, but activists like Devin Barrington Ward believe it also may be what happens inside prisons. It's just a system that holds people in cages um, for a period of time but it doesn't correct the behavior. Research shows people with drug and alcohol addictions reoffend more often. And looking at some of the arrest records from repeat offenders in Atlanta, you see a common problem. Research shows programs inside prisons that help offenders get job training, housing, mental and substance abuse help before their release reduce the likelihood they'll commit crimes again. Well, that doesn't make sense to send them back to the same system that hasn't corrected the behavior that has caused the criminality in the first place. Let's look at the recidivism rates in the country. Those rates are calculated by the percentage of people reconvicted within three years of release. Georgia's recidivism rate is 30%, about average for the country. But look at Virginia and South Carolina. They have the lowest in the country. 23.1%. How? Both states heavily rely on in-prison re-entry programs. After South Carolina changed and implemented their re-entry program in 2018, their recidivism rate dropped for the first time in 20 years. If we are convicting folks and incarcerating them to the same system that's sending them back to our communities in the first place without addressing the need of rehabilitation, services, um, mental health, and all of the other things that put people at the margin, then it's really just a revolving door. As crime increased throughout the pandemic, the state of Georgia funneled resources into a crime suppression unit. And today, leaders are touting the program's successes. Caitlin Ross joining us live from the state capitol, where she just spoke to the governor and Atlanta police chief about it. Caitlin, how are they saying this program really showed its worthiness of being in the state? Well, that's a great question, Aisha. They say they've really focused on crime suppression and stopping crime before it starts. So how have they done it? They've brought together a whole range of state agencies. We're talking from GBI to the Department of Natural Resources. And it was interesting. DNR's commissioner said, you might think that we're country boys out of place here in the city, but actually by using some of those resources, like the ATVs that they use, they're able to get into small sneaky spaces that typical urban vehicles can't access. So by all coming together, the governor says they've really been able to stamp out some of that crime rise we've seen in the state. And he says that money that they threw at getting crime down is worth it. We will use every resource at our disposal to rid our communities of crime and keep Georgia families safe. Some of those resources are on display here this morning. So you can see firsthand what we're putting into this fight. And this represents just a fraction of the $5 million in emergency funds and resources I directed to the crime suppression operation since the unit's inception. And he said emergency funds there, and he made the point that crime in Georgia really was an emergency. The crime rates were going up, and they needed to do something to address it. So the leaders who spoke today do believe that this collaboration is working, but they say it can only work with the partnership of the justice system. I spoke one-on-one -on -one with Police Chief Rodney Bryant from Atlanta Police, and he again expressed frustration that repeat offenders keep getting let out of jail, no prison sentence at all in some cases, and then they're just rearrested the following weekend. So he says no matter how much money they throw at it, no matter how many arrests that have been made, there has to be accountability on the back end for this really to work. All right, Caitlin, thank you. Got to end that cycle. Republican gubernatorial candidate David Perdue is vying for votes in Cobb County, a part of the metro he lost in the Senate runoff last year. Purdue campaigned with Newt Gingrich in Marietta yesterday, where the pair criticized Governor Brian Kemp, mainly for going against debunked claims of fraud in the 2020 presidential election. But voters still say they're torn ahead of the primaries. It's really hard for voters right now. Well, I'm, I'm undecided in the race. I am torn between the two candidates. There are a lot of Republicans that are going to have a difficult choice between the candidates. 
They got a little while to figure it out because we're just a couple of months away from the primary, which is Tuesday, May 24th. The runoff, if needed, that's going to be June 21st. Remember, if you're voting absentee, it must be submitted by May 13th at the very latest. It's no secret that prices at the pump and the grocery store are just about everywhere. They're high, but a new forecast shows just how long these high prices could last. Still ahead, why they go up faster than they fall. News out of Cobb County, where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And we're Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of Helps drive. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscast. We begin tonight with breaking news. And watch on demand. We are tracking severe storms. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. 11 Alive News Verify. It's where you see viral claims put under the microscope. This Facebook post is all over the internet, but is it true? Where the fight against bad information begins with your good question. Laura from Marietta asks, can this program... And where the experts read between the lies. The fine print shows this isn't real. 11 Alive News Verify. Where you know what's fact and what's fiction. Watch weekdays at 5, 6, and 11 p.m. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. He is a character in his own self. I mean, he's my miracle child. And I treated him like he was a miracle and that he was loved every single day. I can remember that day like it was yesterday. How could this happen? A lot of parents are bearing their children. People always say black people don't do that. Yes, here's a picture. A Different Cry, now streaming on Roku and Fire TV. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County, where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step. Welcome back to 11 Alive, where Atlanta speaks. Have something you want verified? Email us at verify at 11alive.com. Primary election season is on the way, and you know that means those political ads are about to be everywhere you look. And some of those ads will inevitably make outlandish claims. But some of you are asking if candidates have to tell the truth in those ads. Brandon Lewis with our Verify team bringing you just the facts. Our sources are the Federal Communications Commission, the Federal Trade Commission, and University of Minnesota political science professor David Schultz. The rules for political ads are very different than typical consumer products. And we want to be clear up front that the answer to this question is no. Political ads are not required to be factual in order to be aired on broadcast television. In fact, the law allows politicians to say almost whatever they want in a commercial. This is because political ads are regulated by the FCC, which applies just two rules. One is that all candidates have the same opportunity to buy commercial time on stations. And two is that politicians can say whatever they want. Accuracy is not one of the rules. Although TV stations could run a disclaimer explaining the rules before airing an ad. The only consequence for politicians who produce misleading or false ads is in court. And that's only if they defame someone, which is rare and hard to prove. I think the rationale behind it is what? The idea of saying that candidates get to say what they want and what? The voters get to sort of, through the marketplace of ideas, decide what's true, what's false. That marketplace could also include news stories or fact checks, like verify stories explaining what's true and false. 
Show says you should always read the fine print on an ad to see who is funding it and do your own research on a candidate to see if what's being claimed is really true. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. If you hear something or see something online you want us to verify, just send us an email. You can also text Verify to that number you see right there on your screen. All right, the clouds remain in place as we head through the afternoon. Take a live look. This is over into the Athens area. Yep, folks at UGA, you're looking at the clouds thinking, mm, should I go out? Should I not go out? Yeah, you can go out. It's just going to rain cloudy for the rest of the afternoon. As you can see, we have uh, mostly cloudy skies on the radar here. No rain coming out of those clouds, even though if you look up here to the far north, it appears that there's some sprinkles coming out of the sky. Doubt that that's even reaching the ground, but eventually that rain will get in here and it will reach the ground. Temperatures a little bit on the cool side. We have a warm front that's down to the south of us. Now, once that begins to lift further to the north, we get back into that southerly flow. Right now, those winds out of the southeast. Once we get into that southerly flow, it's going to boost those temperatures up a bit, despite the fact that we don't have a whole lot of sun out there. Now we're forecasting a high of about 82 degrees, 20 degrees away. Now we're really going to watch to see how far north that front gets uh, before it begins to uh, change or at least bring in those southerly winds to change that forecast to change that outlook. Winds right now, these are gusts are on the light side, but they will begin to pick up this afternoon. As we take a look here, this is by five o'clock and look at this, that southerly flow. And those winds in the 30 mile per hour range, those wind gusts in the 30 mile per hour range, it'll get up to about 40, maybe 45 miles per hour. And that's ahead of the storms that will make their way into the area around the midnight hour. So we have a wind advisory in effect now that will last until 8 a.m. Thursday. We're looking at uh, wind sustained winds anywhere between 15 and 20 miles per hour. Gusts could get as high as 45 miles per hour. Of course, that could do some damage to some of the weak trees out there, maybe some loose limbs. Any uh, loose objects that you have around your home, they could be picked up and blown in the wind as well. So you want to secure those. And uh, that could also lead to power outages as well. So that's something that we'll be watching for for the rest of the afternoon. Now we're only going to keep the clouds in place. Again, it won't be until after midnight that those storms will start to roll in. You know the other thing that's going to be blowing around? The pollen. Look at the count today. In the 2000s, 2,431. That's the tree pollen count for today. Mold yesterday, we saw that get extremely high as well, back down to the moderate category there, and grass and weeds are low. So not only are you feeling it, but I know you're seeing it as well, starting to uh, infiltrate your cars now. You want to hold off on washing them just a little bit. Maybe let that rain come in and, you know, wash some of this pollen out of the air. Eight out of a possible 11 today on the whizometer. Again, 82 degrees, our forecast high. We do have the clouds in place. Not a whole lot of breaks yet. I'm thinking this afternoon there may be a few more breaks to yield a little bit of sunshine through. That will also help to boost our temperature up as well. There's that line of showers and thunderstorms. Expecting that to get a little bit more powerful as well. Right now we do have a tornado watch in effect for places like Arkansas and into Louisiana. That will continue to stretch, I think, over toward the east as well as uh, that line continues to push eastward. It is a quick mover. That's the good news from this. So it's not going to drop a whole lot of rain. We're expecting at least here uh, for it to be anywhere from one to maybe two inches in some localized spots. You notice that pink area there. Same as last week. We do have a moderate risk or a level four out of a possible five uh, just north of Memphis, down south of Jackson, Mississippi. It extends over into central Alabama. For us, it's a level two threat. Expecting those storms to weaken a little bit as it moves to the east as well. That level two threat exists from Rome over toward Atlanta, east of Atlanta, over toward Athens down through making a level one threat. Either way, here's what you're going to see some very heavy rain coming down, especially for tomorrow morning. Now this won't get into the state until after midnight, but it won't affect the metro area until the wee hours of the morning, and it will be around for our morning commute. So at the watch that I have some of those thunderstorms will have some damaging winds and we can't rule out a brief tornado, even though that threat is low. Notice how our model starts to break up the clouds a little bit by the five o'clock hour. It won't last. Those clouds will come right back in. Here we are by midnight and you see the storms just entering into our far northwest. We'll move over the metro area between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. I'll give it that window and then after that it moves over toward the east. We'll start the drying out process, get some sunshine in here before it sets on Thursday and we'll hold on to it for Friday as well. In fact, a little bit cooler behind that front. 82 today, the forecast high looking at 75 for tomorrow. 68 will be the high temperature on Friday and over the weekend. Nice couple tens on the whizometer. Temperatures right near 70 degrees, so not too bad, but be weather aware, folks. We've got to be prepared overnight tonight uh, going into Thursday morning. Aisha, back to you. If you're wondering when those gas and grocery prices are going to come down, the answer is probably not anytime soon. In fact, some new government forecasts show you might have to pay even more in the coming months. New federal forecasts show food prices will likely keep climbing. The average cost of gas will stay high or may even rise. 
The USDA now predicts grocery prices will increase up to 4% throughout this year, and the average cost of dining out could set a new record. That's partly because Ukraine and Russia usually export a lot of the world's wheat and corn. They will have global context impact beyond anything we've seen since World War II. And China's new COVID-19 lockdowns are making it hard for supply chains to recover from the pandemic. Oil prices dipped a bit this week. That's after Russia said it would ease up its assault on parts of Ukraine. But... I think we should be clear-eyed about the reality of what's happening on the ground, and no one should be fooled by Russia's announcements. It's called uh, rockets and feathers, meaning when the price goes up uh, of the price per barrel, that means your gas station price goes up like a rocket. When the price comes down per barrel, the gas station price comes down like a feather. Prices from the last month demonstrate what she's saying. Here they are for oil and gas. And here's a forecast into next year. U.S. oil producers aren't increasing drilling much to help. CEOs say investor pressure is restraining growth, according to a Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas survey. Because of gas, we are, as of right now, no, we are definitely not taking our uh, family vacation this year. It'll be more or less a trip to the lake. I'm Amy Kindly reporting. We're three years into the pandemic, and a local artist wants to make sure those lost due to COVID-19 are not just a number. How he's using art to connect with families and honor their loved ones. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscast. We begin tonight with breaking news. And watch on demand. We are tracking severe storms. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. 11 Alive News Verify. It's where you see viral claims put under the microscope. This Facebook post is all over the internet, but is it true? Where the fight against bad information begins with your good question. Laura from Marietta asks, can this program... And where the experts read between the lies. The fine print shows this isn't real. 11 Alive News Verify, where you know what's fact and what's fiction. Watch weekdays at 5, 6, and 11 p.m. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. He is a character in his own self. I mean, he's my miracle child. And I treated him like he was a miracle and that he was loved every single day. I can remember that day like it was yesterday. How could this happen? A lot of parents are bearing their children. People always say black people don't do that. Yes, here's a picture. A Different Cry, now streaming on Roku and Fire TV. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And we're Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscast. We begin tonight with breaking news. And watch on demand. We are tracking severe storms. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. 11 Alive News Verify. It's where you see viral claims put under the microscope. This Facebook post is all over the internet, but is it true? Where the fight against bad information begins with your good question. Laura from Marietta asks, can this program... Three years into COVID-19, and it's easy for all the numbers we talk about to just blur into the background of daily life. To date, there have been more than 980,000 deaths in the U.S. due to COVID-19. A local artist wants to ensure these fathers, mothers, sisters, brothers, and friends are remembered as more than just numbers. 
Liza Lucas shares more. He was such a fun person. He was a friend to everyone. My dad loved to take tequila shots. So if he would have met you for the first time, he would have said, hey, Here's a tequila shot. Let's do a shot together. Since losing her father to COVID-19, Nancy Gallegos has been holding on to her dad's joy for life. I've been trying to honor him in every single way since he's died. And that's when Nancy found Leslie Murphy's work online. The Metro Atlanta artist lost her own parents several years ago, and in her grief, immersed herself in her art. Just knowing how much art helped me through that dark period um, made me really just want to reach out to other families. So Leslie began the Not Just a Number portrait series, helping families across the country honor the memory of their loved ones lost to COVID-19. One of the portraits of a nurse from Texas, she was an ER nurse, and her daughter had begged her to retire early. Sure enough, she did catch COVID and she passed away. And reading about her story in particular and knowing that she was high risk and knowing that she was gonna keep working anyway and keep trying to be helpful, it was just heartbreaking to make. In the background, the process, daughter, deeply personal. Through her work, Leslie seeks to highlight the humanity behind the number of COVID deaths. Memories, favorite places, songs, woven into the portraits. She used every single word that I wrote about my dad. Happy, loving, caring, life of the party. She brought it to life in this picture and I just couldn't believe it when I saw it. From all walks of life, lives remembered. They're not just numbers. These are real people who had hopes, they had dreams, they had families, they are deeply loved and deeply missed. Fantastic story from our Liza Lucas. This project has been an act of love. Leslie's completed nearly 30 portraits so far. Each takes around 10 hours to complete, and they've all been created for families for free thanks to fundraising efforts. We have more information on how you can get a closer view of her work on 11alive.com. We'll be right back. News Verify, where you know what's fact and what's fiction. Watch weekdays at 5, 6, and 11 p.m. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. He is a character in his own self. I mean, he's just my miracle child. And I treated him like he was a miracle and that he was loved every single day. I can remember that day like it was yesterday. How could this happen? A lot of parents are bearing their children. People always say black people don't do that. Yes, here's a picture. A Different Cry, now streaming on Roku and Fire TV. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of drive. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News. Is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscast. We begin tonight with breaking news. And watch on demand. We are tracking severe storms. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. 11 Alive News Verify. It's where you see viral claims put under the microscope. This Facebook post is all over the internet, but is it true? Where the fight against bad information begins with your good question. Laura from Marietta asks, can this program... And where the experts read between the lies. The fine print shows this isn't real. 11 Alive News Verify, where you know what's fact and what's fiction. Watch weekdays at 5, 6, and 11 p.m. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. 
a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the stronger storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. He is a character in his own self. He's just my miracle child. 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. 11 Alive News at Noon begins with breaking news. A soldier was killed early this morning in a helicopter incident at Fort Stewart in Georgia. A press release says the incident involving two helicopters at the Wright Army Airfield, but not many other details being given right now. The soldier was with the 3rd Combat Aviation Brigade. We will be sure to keep following this story and bring you any updates right here on air and on 11alive.com. Well, we have a wind advisory right now across the entire western side of the state, and meteorologist Chesley McNeil is tracking that growing chance of severe weather coming into our area. Chesley, we indeed are weather aware right now. Yeah, we need to be, and uh, we're not expecting that heavy rain and the thunderstorms to get in here until later on tonight. But as you mentioned, the wind advisory will stay with us all the way through the night into tomorrow morning, so those winds will really start to pick up on us light right now. So if you're going out, you may not feel the winds uh, as strong as we're expecting them to be uh, as we head through the afternoon. But right now, we do have the clouds over in place. Mostly cloudy skies. Expecting a few breaks in those clouds. Get a little bit of sunshine in here. That's going to help to boost the temperatures up just a little bit. But right now, the temperatures are running in the upper 60s. In fact, there's that line of showers, thunderstorms we were telling you about. All right. And you can see we have a tornado warning on one of these right here over in northern parts of uh, Louisiana. This will continue to advance over toward the east and get stronger as it does. In fact, we're expecting to see some very volatile weather in places like Louisiana, Mississippi, and into at least western portions of Alabama. We could be seeing some long track tornadoes. It's certainly possible, so we'll keep you updated on that as we go. It will weaken somewhat as it moves toward us and won't arrive here until after midnight. Okay, because of that timing, the wee hours of the morning, it will lose some of its punch, but we still could see some pretty strong winds uh, from the system. So we'll be watching that as well. In fact, we have a level two threat over us. You can see uh, the slight risk for severe weather from Rome over toward Atlanta, from Athens down to Macon. That's that level one threat. That's a marginal risk for severe weather. Either way, what we're going to see is very heavy rain. We will get a few uh, strong or damaging winds from a few of those thunderstorms, and we cannot rule out a brief tornado. Now, the threat for that is low, but we can't rule it out. We could see one or two of those begin to spin up and then spin right out. And so we'll watch for that as we head through the overnight as well. Again, the timing for this places this system over us, uh, at least here in the metro area, between 2 and 6 o'clock. So it will have an impact on our morning, mute, uh, morning commute. So we'll have to watch it. So get yourself ready. Maybe even because it's a fast mover, wait, if you can, till 8, 9 o'clock clock where it'll be uh, over toward the east of us. High threat for the rain. We'll have some heavy rain around one to two inches possible. Uh, medium threat for the damaging winds and then a low threat for tornadoes and hail. Right now those temperatures are running in the 60s. Got some 70s down here to the south. Again, that front will continue to lift further off to the north. Look at the 50s we have around as well. Uh, we'll see those temperatures try to make it up to about 82 degrees for this afternoon. We'll drop back to 78 degrees by 7 o'clock tonight. And we'll have more on the timing of the line of showers and thunderstorms in the full forecast coming up. Aisha, back to you. Developing right now, Gwinnett County police are searching for a shooter who killed a man in a shopping center parking lot. 11 Alive's Brittany Klein Peter live for us right now along Indian Trail Road near Lil Burn. Brittany, what do they say happened out there? Aisha, they say they found the man in this shopping center parking lot. They are reviewing surveillance footage, but as you can see, there are several businesses in this shopping center. They say that the man was between his 30s and 40s, and he has not been named yet. When we were at the scene earlier this morning, we saw them gathering evidence in the parking lot in front of the hair salon. It's believed some altercation ensued in the parking lot that led up to the shooting. I'm not sure if he was hit multiple times. It's believed there's multiple shell casings. When I asked the police department about crime in this shopping center, they said that this is the first major crime that they've responded to here. Again, they are still interviewing witnesses. They're asking anyone with information that may lead to an arrest to contact them. Aisha. Turning now to a developing story, one man describes the panic that broke out inside of a gym in Stone Mountain when gunshots started going off outside. There were like crackers uh, going out, like something happened, like talk, talk, talk. And and then I suddenly uh, looked around and everybody's just piling and running and there was stampede going on, running people running from everywhere coming towards us. 
That was Ali Zane, who says he was working out inside the LA Fitness on Stone Mountain Highway last night when he heard those gunshots. He says two people got into a fight over a basketball and that escalated to gunfire. Zane showed us his car that was parked near the front of the gym and you see that bullet hole right in his door. He says this was really scary because the gym was full of people and they could have gotten hurt. As crime went up throughout the pandemic, the state of Georgia funneled some resources into a crime suppression unit. And today, leaders are touting the program's successes. Our Caitlin Ross joining us live from the state capitol. Caitlin, you just talked to the governor and also the Atlanta police chief about this program. Tell us what do they say is working with this? Aisha, they pointed to a number of successes, stolen cars recovered, DUI arrests, murderers that they were able to get off the street. They say all of this was made possible because so many state agencies are working together. And it's not just the typical police department GBI, they actually are pulling in the Georgia Department of Natural Resources. I thought it was interesting during the news conference, the director of DNR said most people think about, you know, being out on boats or out in the forests, but DNR has really been able to come into the urban spaces in a meaningful way using their specialized skill set, their specialized equipment to get into places where urban police officers maybe wouldn't be able to and help make these arrests. The governor says everyone working together is vital to bring the crime rate down in the state. We will use every resource at our disposal to rid our communities of crime and keep Georgia families safe. Some of those resources are on display here this morning, so you can see firsthand what we're putting into this fight. And this represents just a fraction of the $5 million in emergency funds and resources I directed to the crime suppression operation since the unit's inception. And he used money from the emergency fund because he says crime in Georgia is an emergency. And it's vital that all of these agencies work together to bring the crime rate down. He said, though, that only works if there's accountability in the justice system to follow that up. He says a revolving door of criminals is not justice at all. Aisha. And Caitlin, these sobering statistics about dangerous criminals continuously finding new victims. Take a look at this right now. In just one week, APD officers reported arresting 20 repeat offenders, which had a total of 553 previous arrests and 114 felony convictions. Now we're learning a thousand people are responsible for 40% of the crimes committed in Atlanta. So what can be done to break the cycle and keep you safe? Hope Ward is bringing you the solutions. Arrest, convict, repeat. How does Atlanta and Georgia stop this from happening? Is it longer prison sentences? Maybe, but activists like Devin Barrington Ward believe it also may be what happens inside prisons. It's just a system that holds people in cages um, for a period of time but it doesn't correct the behavior. Research shows people with drug and alcohol addictions reoffend more often. And looking at some of the arrest records from repeat offenders in Atlanta, you see a common problem. Research shows programs inside prisons that help offenders get job training, housing, mental and substance abuse help before their release reduce the likelihood they'll commit crimes again. Well, that doesn't make sense to send them back to the same system that hasn't corrected the behavior that has caused the criminality in the first place. Let's look at the recidivism rates in the country. Those rates are calculated by the percentage of people reconvicted within three years of release. Georgia's recidivism rate is 30%, about average for the country. But look at Virginia and South Carolina. They have the lowest in the country. 23.1%. How? Both states heavily rely on in-prison re-entry programs. After South Carolina changed and implemented their re-entry program in 2018, their recidivism rate dropped for the first time in 20 years. If we are convicting folks and incarcerating them to the same system that's sending them back to our communities in the first place without addressing the need of rehabilitation, services, um, mental health, and all of the other things that put people at the margin, then it's really just a revolving door. Republican gubernatorial candidate David Perdue is vying for votes in Cobb County, a part of the metro he lost in the Senate runoff last year. Perdue campaigned with Newt Gingrich and Marietta yesterday, where the pair criticized Governor Brian Kemp mainly for going against debunked claims of fraud in the 2020 election. But voters still say they're torn ahead of the primaries. 
it's really hard for voters right now. Well, I'm, I'm undecided in the race. I am torn between the two candidates. There are a lot of Republicans that are going to have a difficult choice between the candidates. We're just a couple months away from the primary, which is Tuesday, May 24th. The runoff, if needed, is going to be June 21st. Remember, if you're voting absentee, it must be submitted by May 13th at the latest. It is no secret that prices at the pump, at the grocery store, everywhere, they're high. But a new forecast shows just how long high prices could last. Still ahead, why they go up faster than they fall. Like it was yesterday. How could this happen? A lot of parents are bearing their children. People always say black people don't do that. Yes, here's a picture. A different cry, now streaming on Roku and Fire TV. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And we're Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. We begin tonight with breaking news. And watch on demand. We are tracking severe storms. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. 11 Alive News Verify. It's where you see viral claims put under the microscope. This Facebook post is all over the internet, but is it true? Where the fight against bad information begins with your good question. Laura from Marietta asks, can this program... And where the experts read between the lies. The fine print shows this isn't real. 11 Alive News Verify. Where you know what's fact and what's fiction. Watch weekdays at 5, 6, and 11 p.m. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. He is a character in his own self. He's just my miracle child. And I treated him like he was a miracle and that he was loved every single day. I can remember that day like it was yesterday. How could this happen? Welcome back to 11 Alive, where Atlanta speaks. Have something you want verified? Email us at verify at 11alive.com. Primary election season is on the way, and that means we are about to see political ads everywhere we look. And some of those ads will inevitably make some outlandish claims. But some of you are asking if candidates have to tell the truth in those ads. Brandon Lewis with the Verify team is bringing you just the facts. Our sources are the Federal Communications Commission, the Federal Trade Commission, and University of Minnesota political science professor David Schultz. The rules for political ads are very different than typical consumer products. And we want to be clear up front that the answer to this question is no. Political ads are not required to be factual in order to be aired on broadcast television. In fact, the law allows politicians to say almost whatever they want in a commercial. This is because political ads are regulated by the FCC, which applies just two rules. One is that all candidates have the same opportunity to buy commercial time on stations. And two is that politicians can say whatever they want. Accuracy is not one of the rules. Although, TV stations could run a disclaimer explaining the rules before airing an ad. The only consequence for politicians who produce misleading or false ads is in court. And that's only if they defame someone, which is rare and hard to prove. I think the rationale behind it is what? The idea of saying that candidates get to say what they want and what? The voters get to sort of, through the marketplace of ideas, decide what's true, what's false. 
That marketplace could also include news stories or fact checks, like verify stories explaining what's true and false. Shell says you should always read the fine print on an ad to see who is funding it and do your own research on a candidate to see if what's being claimed is really true. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Right, thanks a lot, Brandon. We have clouds overhead. We will get some breaks in those clouds in some spots where we get a little bit of sunshine in, and that's going to help the boost temperatures up just a little bit. Also, that southerly wind will help to boost those temperatures up. And so it's going to be a windy, warm, and cloudy afternoon. Not the best of combinations, uh, but we're not anticipating any rain getting in here until after midnight tonight. So it will be a dry day. If you have to go out and about, well, note that it will be dry for you. Okay, we don't have any rain coming out of the clouds right now. You see these temperatures? Yeah, notice down here to the south, we have them in the 70s. So 71 degrees right now in Peachtree City, 72 down in Thomaston, 70 in LaGrange. You run into the 60s the further north you go. Got a warm front down here that's going to continue to lift to the north. So that'll also help to boost up those temperatures and bring in that strong southerly wind that we have out there ahead of the front. We're going to notice those wind gusts really start to go up. Light right now as far as the gusts are concerned, but look at this. Once we get toward the afternoon, 3, 4 o'clock, maybe 5 o'clock, you're looking at the wind gust in the 30 mile per hour range in some spots approaching the 40 mile per hour range as far as those gusts go. And this is before that line of showers, thunderstorms will move in as that cold front gets a little bit closer to our area. Looking at sustained winds, 15 to 25 miles per hour. Again, gusts could be as high as the 40, 45 mile per hour range. That could blow around some of those weak trees, maybe even knock them over. You typically get um, power outages when you have wind advisories like this. And so winds that strong can do their damage. And so that's what we'll have to watch out for for the rest of the afternoon, along with the clouds. You're not going to see much in the way of sunshine or a whole lot in the way of sunshine. We will have those clouds out there, but those temperatures will be rather warm. Again, getting up to about uh, 82 degrees. Pollen will be blowing around as well. The count today at 2,431. It's up there. Yeah, we saw the mold extremely high yesterday. That's now down to the medium range and then low for the weeds and the grass. And so, yeah, you're starting to not only feel it as far as the pollen goes, but you're starting to see it now on your cars out there. Hopefully the rain that comes in tonight will help to wash out some of that from the air and then we'll do it all over again. Eight out of a possible 11 today on the Wizometer. Now, this is how we rate your weather on a scale from one to 11, with 11 being the most perfect day we can have weather wise. The temperature should be around 70 this time of year. Of course, we'll be well above that if our temperature reaches the 82 degree mark there. And again, just a few slivers of sunshine around, but at least we remain dry until after midnight. That's where we'll be watching this line of showers and thunderstorms. In fact, we're going to track this as it makes its way, especially over into parts of Mississippi and into Alabama, where we are right now under a level four threat out of a possible five for severe weather. This pink or red shade that you see right here, north of Memphis, just south of Jackson, Mississippi, is where we have that level four threat. Long track tornadoes are possible in that area. Let's say in and around that area as well. For us, uh, as the storm gets a little bit closer, especially with the timing, we're expecting it to weaken somewhat. So we're down to a level two threat here. That's from Rome over toward Atlanta. East of the city of Atlanta, you got Athens and Macon here. That's a level one threat. Either way, in both these areas, we're going to experience that very heavy rain. The major threat for this will be straight line wind damage. With some of those thunderstorms that roll through, we can see those winds getting up to about 60 miles per hour. So we'll have to watch that. The tornado threat is low, but it's there. So a brief tornado is certainly possible, especially uh, from Rome and our westernmost counties. You can see some of that level three now leaking into our westernmost counties. So we'll have to watch that. Here's how it all times out. Forecast track model. You can follow along with the time right there at the top of the screen. It shows the clouds in place. Some thinning taking place, but don't get used to that. The clouds will fill right back in. After midnight, line of th thunderstorms will move into our far northwestern counties and then make its way down toward the metro. That'll be between 2 and about 6 o'clock. So during your morning commute, those of you getting up very early to go to school and work, this is what we'll be dealing with. That very heavy rain, some embedded thunderstorms, gusty winds as well. The line shifts a little bit further to the east as we head into 7 o'clock hour, 8 o'clock hour. By 9, should begin to clear out mid-morning. We'll get some sunshine back in here. We'll hold on to it through the afternoon and temperatures behind this front will cool down somewhat. Now today we're talking about a high of 82 tomorrow. 75 degrees will be the high temperature down to the 60s by Friday under mostly sunny skies and remaining comfortable as we head through the weekend with temperatures in the low 70s. We'll also hold on to that sunshine even as we head into next week. Next best chance for rain after that will be on Tuesday. Right now it's a 30% chance for rain. Aisha. All right, Chesley, thank you. So if you're wondering when those gas and grocery prices are going to come down, the answer is probably not anytime soon. In fact, some new government forecasts show you might have to pay even more in the coming months. New federal forecasts show food prices will likely keep climbing. The average cost of gas will stay high or may even rise. 
The USDA now predicts grocery prices will increase up to 4% throughout this year, and the average cost of dining out could set a new record. That's partly because Ukraine and Russia usually export a lot of the world's wheat and corn. It will have global context impact beyond anything we've seen since World War II. And China's new COVID-19 lockdowns are making it hard for supply chains to recover from the pandemic. Oil prices dipped a bit this week. That's after Russia said it would ease up its assault on parts of Ukraine. But... I think we should be clear-eyed about the reality of what's happening on the ground, and no one should be fooled by Russia's announcements. It's called uh, rockets and feathers, meaning when the price goes up uh, of the price per barrel, that means your gas station price goes up like a rocket. When the price comes down per barrel, the gas station price comes down like a feather. Prices from the last month demonstrate what she's saying. Here they are for oil and gas. And here's a forecast into next year. U.S. oil producers aren't increasing drilling much to help. CEOs say investor pressure is restraining growth, according to a Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas survey. Because of gas, we are, as of right now, no, we are definitely not taking our uh, family vacation this year. It'll be more or less a trip to the lake. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. We're three years into the pandemic and a local artist wants to ensure those lost due to COVID-19 are not just a number, how she's using art to connect with families and honor loved ones. Eleven Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. Eleven Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And we're Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. Eleven Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. We begin tonight with breaking news. And watch on demand. We are tracking severe storms. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. 11 Alive News Verify. It's where you see viral claims put under the microscope. This Facebook post is all over the internet, but... Is it true? Where the fight against bad information begins with your good question. Laura from Marietta asks, can this program... And where the experts read between the lies. The fine print shows this isn't real. 11 Alive News Verify, where you know what's fact and what's fiction. Watch weekdays at 5, 6, and 11 p.m. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark. Three years into COVID-19, and it's easy for all the numbers we talk about to just blur into the background of daily life. To date, there have been more than 980,000 deaths in the U.S. due to COVID-19. A local artist wants to ensure these Fathers, mothers, sisters and brothers and friends are remembered as more than just the number. Liza Lucas shows us how. He was such a fun person. He was a friend to everyone. My dad loved to take tequila shots. So if he would have met you for the first time, he would have said, hey, here's a tequila shot. Let's do a shot together. Since losing her father to COVID-19, Nancy Gallegos has been holding on to her dad's joy for life. I've been trying to honor him in every single way since he's died. And that's when Nancy found Leslie Murphy's work online. The Metro Atlanta artist lost her own parents several years ago, and in her grief, immersed herself in her art. Just knowing how much art helped me through that dark period um, made me really just want to reach out to other families. So Leslie began the Not Just a Number portrait series, helping families across the country honor the memory of their loved ones lost to COVID-19. One of the portraits of a nurse from Texas, she was an ER nurse, and her daughter had begged her to retire early. Sure enough, she did 
catch COVID and she passed away. And reading about her story in particular and knowing that she was high risk and knowing that she was gonna keep working anyway and keep trying to be helpful, it was just heartbreaking to make. In the background, the process, deeply personal. Through her work, Leslie seeks to highlight the humanity behind the number of COVID deaths. Memories, favorite places, songs, woven into the portraits. She used every single word that I wrote about my dad. Happy, loving, caring, life of the party. She brought it to life in this picture and I just couldn't believe it when I saw it. From all walks of life, lives remembered. They're not just numbers. These are real people who had hopes, they had dreams, they had families. They are deeply loved and deeply missed. Seeing how she incorporated the family's words was so touching. Leslie's completed nearly 30 portraits so far. Each takes around 10 hours, and they've all been created for families for free thanks to fundraising efforts. Some people have decided the pandemic is a time to take risks, so they're taking a leap into day trading, and it's millennials leading the pack. Next, our Y Guy explains why this age group has such a high interest. I can remember that day like it was yesterday. How could this happen? A lot of parents are bearing their children. People always say black people don't do that. Yes, here's a picture. A Different Cry, now streaming on Roku and Fire TV. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And we're Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscast. We begin tonight with breaking news. And watch on demand. We are tracking severe storms. 11 Alive News, stream now on Roku. 11 Alive News Verify. It's where you see viral claims put under the microscope. This Facebook post is all over the internet, but is it true? Where the fight against bad information begins with your good question. Laura from Marietta asks, can this program... And where the experts read between the lies. The fine print shows this isn't real. 11 Alive News Verify. Where you know what's fact and what's fiction. Watch weekdays at 5, 6, and 11 p.m. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you all. It's not exactly high stakes roulette, but it is a bit of Vegas right at your fingertips. Day trading is fast and risky and the kind of gamble many are willing to take during the financial uncertainty of the pandemic. Some people having success, others aren't. You can make some money, but you could also very well uh, lose your money very, very quickly. Day trading involves buying stocks and selling them within hours or even minutes. Let's look at why the pandemic has made day trading attractive, especially to millennials. Social media sites like Reddit and TikTok are filled with posts focused on meme stocks. Those are the stocks that experience a drastic increase in value due to the hype on social media, not necessarily because of the performance of the company. Financial expert Andrew Poulos says social media has created a new generation of young investors. Those stocks can go up, you know, tens of dollars or hundreds of dollars, and they can come right back down in the middle, you know, just in an instant, and you could be caught in the middle. The pandemic has caused layoffs and desperation. Some are willing to risk a stimulus check or two. A lot of people are using that stimulus to try to make more money. That's what sort of, you know, in part has been fueling uh, the market. We're spending a lot of time at home creating restlessness. Some look to day trading online for excitement. I don't know if I would be uh, day trading uh, because I'm bored at home. You know, I mean, we are playing with real money. Pulis says anyone who gets involved in day trading needs to be aware of the risks. And remember, if your gains exceed your losses, Uncle Sam is going to want his share.
the more you know. Happy trading. Thanks for watching 11 Alive News at noon. Stay safe out there and stay weather aware. We begin tonight with breaking news. And watch on demand. We are tracking severe storms. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. 11 Alive News Verify. It's where you see viral claims put under the microscope. This Facebook post is all over the internet, but is it true? Where the fight against bad information begins with your good question. Laura from Marietta asks, can this program... And where the experts read between the lies. The fine print shows this isn't real. 11 Alive News Verify. Where you know what's fact and what's fiction. Watch weekdays at 5, 6, and 11 p.m. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11